to begin this second talk this afternoon by Martin Solowell on Akhan Hekia Algebra for Okay, well, thank you for the introduction. Also, thanks to the organizers for inviting me here to speak here. Um, well, as you will see, we have an afternoon full of uh, hacker algebras. Eric was talking about that's my great hacker algebra at the end of my hacker algebras. I will do as well. Um, only, uh, well, my talk has a somewhat different motivation. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, okay, it works. But it's going too fast. So, okay. So, so my motivation in, in this talk is very much uh, the local language correspondence because I've been working on that for some time and I would like to establish uh, some new cases of it. And, uh, well, for this, I, I first would like to discuss one possible way to attack this, this language correspondence in which it uh, has been done in, the, in many of the cases known so far. So, so what you do is uh, you have to start with some, some super customer representation of a Levy subgroup of a given reductive periodic group. So if you're lazy, you take as your Levy subgroup a torus and a representation of that because those are very well understood. And then, uh, well, then you attach to that a, a language parameter for tori, which is also well known, so for GL and F, or so it's, it's, it's very pretty well known. And then you go and can go on. You can uh, try to find a, 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 a so-called type, and then a notion established by Bushnell um, and uh, Kuchko. And, and from this type, which is usually very hard to find, you can try to build a hacker algebra, and then you can go on to study representations of such hacker algebras. And once you have worked all that out, you can try to okay, say, here I have right, this whole list of representations, now let's try to find language parameters associated to this. So this is uh, um, well, this is in, in many cases still what the plan, but it's, uh, it's hard work that uh, they're going to like that. Um, and and uh, in this talk, I will do it somewhat differently, or I will, I will start at the bottom here and uh, start, so to say, rather on, on the, on the Galois side of this Langlands correspondence, where the objects are then the Langlands parameters. And to these Langlands parameters, I will associate Hecker algebras in, in such a way that the uh, the last item here is, is fulfilled. Then you get that you are given a nicely well chosen set of language parameters. I will associate the Hecker algebra whose irreducible representation are precisely that set of language parameters. But that's the plan. But uh, in practice, it didn't work out exactly that. So, so, so when I embarked on this, I just said, okay, I will do, I will do it this way. I take a given complex reductive group, I associate it to the hacker network, a hacker algebra in a natural way, and I will prove that the representations of this hacker algebra are what I want. And so, okay, so I've worked it out, and then it turned out that it wasn't exactly what I needed, so the construction needed to be modified in, 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 in some, some ugly way, or, or at least more natural way, slightly, to, to find really the language parameters that I was after. Um, so, um, I will following this problem, so more or less this, this scheme. So let me start with the setup. So we are here at the conference about representations of genetic groups, but my entire talk is actually only about things that have to do with complex reductive groups or complex geometry. Of course, it's very well motivated by, by a periodic group, but everything here you can prove without knowing even what the periodic number is. So, so I will do here, uh, I will reserve the, the, the normal G just for complex groups and my periodic groups will be in some other font. Uh, and okay, I take a reductive group and for purposes which will become later, I, it is necessary to allow it to be uh, disconnected. And from this I take uh, so some torus, it doesn't have to be a maximum torus and you build from this. Uh, well, yeah, a uh, levy subgroup only uh, in the case of a, of a disconnected reductive group, you need to be a bit more specific as what well is a, a Levy subgroup. And uh, the appropriate thing to take is the, the centralizer of a, of a group which already appears as the, cent as the center of a, of a connected Levy subgroup. And, uh, well, if you have such a torus in any reductive group, you can make an act on the Lie algebra, and you get from that some system of, of roots. Um, it doesn't have to be a root system a priori, but okay, for the purpose of this talk, I will assume that you will get a root system in this way. That's uh, in the cases which I will need that is that holds. 
And uh, I will work with that uh, root system further on, and I will choose a basis as such. So, um, well, yeah, then, then uh, you have this, this wild group of this root system, but in this context, there is a natural candidate which is somewhat uh, larger. Maybe you can take the uh, Say the normalizer of this torus T and divide out the torus T, that's uh, larger than Y group if G is disconnected. And, and that's actually the, the variation of, uh, of the group which I, of the Y group which I want to, uh, to, to use here. It's the same thing as taking the normalizer of M and then the, the dividing out by M. And so that's, that's not a Y group anymore, at least usually not, but it's like an extended version of a Y group, and you have a Y group. This connected part get extended into some some finite group, which is typically called an R group in this context. And actually, uh, if you know a little bit about uh, finite reflection groups, it's easy to see why this has to be the case. Namely, you see that this finite Y group acts on a, a finite root system where you have a basis, and you also know from Rochester group theory that this finite Y group acts as simply transitively on the set of bases of, of, you know, of the root system. So you can find a complement for this finite wire group in this somewhat larger group. Then you take in this somewhat larger group the elements which fix your chosen set of, of simple roots. So, okay, so in the talk of Eric, it was the affine Hecker algebra. So we are always of the kind to have some, some affine Coxeter group, um, which meant also that you have a lattice and a similar product and lattice with a finite Wild group, and here I will take affine Hecker algebras which are based on the lattice and this uh, group, well, the normalizer of M modulo of M. Um, so let me say more precisely which Hecker algebras I will use. Actually, they will differ in more ways from the Hecker algebras which you saw in the last talk and probably also last week. But, but the differences are, well, they are there for, to make the, the formulation correct, but for proving things it boils down to the more or less the same uh, algebra. So, so uh, I start building them from a finite dimensional algebra which uh, involves basically only this, this finite wild group. Um, so you start then with the group algebra of the finite wild group and you deform it by introducing some parameters in the, in the multiplication relations in the Coxeter group. And uh, well, in this case, I shall want uh, many possible, uh, many different parameters. And basically, for every simple root, I shall want uh, a, a different parameter. Uh, and only there's one condition: then the simple roots which are conjugate under this this extended finite wild group, they should have the same parameters. Okay, I do this in the following way: I choose for every component, irreducible component in the root system, I choose one, one variable zj, and then uh, I, add to the, I add to that uh, parameter function lambda, so, and the parameters will then be something like z to the power lambda. So more explicitly, you can find, build from this uh, an algebra, which is, uh, well, it's finite dimensional if you consider it as a module over the ring of coefficients, which in this case will be polynomials in the Variables uh, zj and zj inverse, and the multiplication relations are uh, those which are usual for for uh, I'm a horic Hecker algebra. You multiply a standard basis. The elements that are multiplied, if the, the lengths add up, if the lengths do not add up, then some some simple reflection will appear twice, and then you have uh, well, some kind of new quadratic relation which does involve the parameters. So in this case, you see that the parameter zj to the power lambda alpha is associated to the roots uh, alpha. Okay, um, so, so this is not really finite dimensional, but it's finite dimensional over this, this coefficient ring, but still you can say it is a deformation of the, of the group algebra of this finite bio group because you can send all uh, the variables at j to one and then you will recover this, this finite dimensional group algebra. Um, and the setup also uh, allows me to, to make this R group act on it. So, so in a natural way, because the R group, uh, well, in this case, it just acts on this finite Y group by conjugation. And since I, I require that two uh, simple roots which are conjugated in this R group have the same parameter, that, that is an algebra automorphism. Okay, so this is the, the finite Y group part. Now let me go to the F fine, Hecker algebra part, 
that just contains the, the, the Hecker algebra of this finite Wahl group, and it also contains the group algebra of the lattice, namely the lattice which is the, 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 the character lattice of, of this complex torus, and it also uh, contains in this case the group algebra of this R group. So um, I'm giving it here in, in the, the Bernstein uh, presentation. It may also be not the same as you have seen the last week, I don't know exactly. In any case, I, I have built it from these three uh, pieces, and I, the, definite, the multiplication is defined by declaring that each of these three sub algebras or is really a sub algebra that the multiplication there does what you want, what you expect. And then you must say how the three different parts interact. And then, of course, if you want to make a, uh, if you want to say how the first tensor factor interacts with the second, it, it suffices to say what happens with the, the, the generators associated to simple roots, and uh, also say the generators of this uh, C of X, X star T associated to elements of, uh, well, to characters of T. And there you have this, this relation uh, written in red, the bernstein gustig stelevinsky relation, as it's usually called. Um, which is, uh, yeah, well, it's mysterious as fair sight. It's wrong, actually, but, uh, yeah, well, if you, if you present the Hecker algebra in, in the in the um, Ori Matsumoto way, as Eric has undoubtedly done last week, then the relations are easier. Um, but then if you transfer it to this version, I guess you actually did, so this is what you end up with. And then this is not even the most complicated version for the sake of simplicity, I've not. Uh, I've omitted here one case in which the equation is twice as long and complicated. Okay, and also we have this R group one. So this is the, the kind of algebra that will, uh, well, is the, the one which appears in the title of, uh, of my talk. And, uh, well, so with those of those I want uh, to find the irreducible representations. So, uh, one first. Thing. Of course, you have in there still this, this algebra of polynomials in, in these variables z and their inverses. So every irreducible representation, you can at least say that, that all these uh, indeterminate z will act via specialization to one complex number. <coughs> and if you specialize this uh, complex number z to be one, then of course, uh, well, you get this, uh, you specialize this back to the group algebra of some infinite group, which is uh, almost. Um, almost f i the group, it contains the f i the group of a uh, finite index, and therefore for such group, it's actually easy to write down the irreducible representations using a Lifford theory. If the parameters are not one, it's uh, it's much, uh, if the zjs are not one, it's much more difficult to parameterize the irreducible representations. So this is something on, on, on which uh, Eric and I, and also Christian and Lushti and many other people have uh, worked. Um, and, uh, well, yes, so, so, so there are definitely methods which work for all such algebras, but for, in this talk, I want to parameterize these representations in a natural way with something like Langes parameters, or in this case, some parameters which are related uh, very easily to the group G. And that's not possible in this, uh, in this setting, or at least not always, uh, I believe. For that, we need to be more specific on, uh, well, yeah, which, uh, which parameter functions lambda we use. So uh, there, there's a rather intricate way to, to specify those, which I will now uh, discuss. It uh, involves uh, various uh, steps. So first, um, well, first we need to, to uh, yeah, we need some unipotent elements and, and enhancements or for those, and, and they have to be Custodial in a suitable way. So this is a notion which is, it's already surprising that it's related to these Hecker algebras, but, but um, that turns out to be the case. So this notion of, of an unipotent elements enhanced with representations of, uh, of, of the centralizer of that, or the component group of the centralizer, is something which uh, probably everybody in this room has seen in, 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 the, in the Springer correspondence. Um, but you can uh, do it more generally in sphere correspondence, there's a particular condition on the half of which representation of the component group of the unipotent elements are allowed. Here I just take them all, and then, uh, well, you can 
go on and say, uh, and define a certain notion of personality, probably Van Green has done this uh, last week, so I will not define it uh, precisely, I will just use it that it's there, and well, you can uh, also define the notion of something like a custodial support for such a unipotent pair, and um, well, yes, I, I, I'm, it's hard to, to, to make uh, to make this uh, 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 explicit, so usually I do not use the definition of custodiality for unipotent pairs, but I rather refer to some explicit lists of all possible examples. So my co-author Ahmed Moussami has compiled a, a rather lengthy list of, of many such cases, so this helps me a lot. Um, okay, but this, this you, you, you can do whenever you, you can have a unipotent pair, you can build from that another unipotent pair, where, which is custodial in, in this sense, and this is some of the later series, it's in some sense related to the custodial support map for uh, representations of the yeah, groups. Um, and uh, yeah, well, I can give some examples that that's easier than understanding the general definition. So if you do it in the case where um, the Levy subgroup is uh, just a torus, uh, a maximal torus of a given complex reductive group, then um, the, the enhanced unipotent pair whose custodial support is just trivial, trivial unipotent element and trivial representation, consists precisely of those things which are used in a, in a Springer correspondence for representations of the associated uh, finite bio group. I uh, will go back to this uh, later. Uh, more explicitly, let me give you one example where uh, we have a custodial pair which is not trivial. The, the, the simplest example in terms of rank is the group the G2. And then you can take a unipotent element which is not a regular element, but it's sub-regular, meaning that it's uh, it's centralized, or it's not of maximal dimension, but one dimension beyond that. Um, not of minimal dimension, but one dimension above that. And, uh, well, then such an element can, then you can compute the component group of the centralizer, which turns out to be the group S3, or as more of S3, and if you take uh, sign representation, this gives you an example of a unipotent pair. And, uh, well, that's, that's in this case also essentially the only important pair whose, whose physical support is not a trivial pair. So let me um, show you also more explicitly how it's related to the, to the Springer correspondence. So uh, in Springer correspondence, we call you start, you can start with a complex reductive group. You also can start with a, it's a usually connected complex reductive group, and you take a matching torus there, and then Springer. And this, this beautiful uh, projection between the irreducible representations of this finite wild group and, and the pairs consisting of the component element U and uh, representations of the component group. Here yeah, I labeled them uh, rho not such that this representation appears in the homology of, of the variety of the subgroup which contain this, this U. And then, of course, at the end, you must consider only U and rho not up to conjugacy. So that's. Um, that, that, that's, that's the basic example here. This example can, this Springer correspondence can be generalized to, to disconnected complex groups also. Only then, uh, then you take the same kind of views, only then the rows, uh, well, you must, must specify more precisely what you mean in condition is then not that the row appears in the variety, in the homology of this variety, but rather that every component of the restriction of row to the Sensorizer in, in G0 already appears in homology of this variety. And then, okay, if you do all this, then you get precisely the unipotent pairs whose, whose custodial support is the, the torus and the one element, one unipotent element, and the trivial unipotent element. Um, yes, okay, well, I hope this, this makes a bit, uh, gives you a bit of intuition for what this custodial support map will do later, but we'll use this custodial support map as we defined over here to uh, define a similar custodial support map for, for Langlands parameters, and then we will say some the statement of the kind and Bernstein component of Langlands parameters is some consists of all Langlands parameters which have the same custodial support map up to twists by the ramified characters. This is one, one reason why we came up with this uh, notion. 
And uh, well, in the hacker algebra that I'm considering, uh, I uh, I need some uh, unipotent pair which is cuspidal in the aforementioned sense. And uh, well, yeah, why exactly that's needed? That's that's not completely clear at the moment. Yeah, I, I came to this because Lucy does it already. And uh, well, so so basically, um, the whole story here uh, in the case of connected groups. Almost everything was done in some way or another by Lucy. But um, well, for disconnected groups, um, there are some additional complications. In any case, uh, if you have such a question on pair, this gives you a way to define this parameter function lambda, namely by the, the formula I described over there. Um, well, you have this, this unipotent element in this case, V. And its edge of representation acts on the algebra, it reserves a particular uh, subspace for, for every group, and you can look at that of the, how, how often you have to apply this, this edge of action to make, this, uh, to make it zero. Um, well, yeah, this, this turns out to be the correct way to define your uh, parameter. So, so this, this tells you um, if you have, say, uh, an irreducible root system with roots of short lengths and roots of well, short roots and long roots. This gives you the ratio between the, the parameters of uh, or the relation between the parameters of the short roots and of the long roots. If you have, uh, if I have a root system which has is not irreducible, then on the different irreducible components, in principle, I want to choose parameters which do not depend on each other. Okay. Now, with this. Uh, in a settled, um, I can define now an algebra based on, on this notion of a, of a cosmological uh, pair, or a cosmological potent pair, uh, in, in, in terms of the algebra which I had before. Um, it's it basically the same, only now that I have fixed this, uh, this parameter function lambda. And I'm still the same kind of extended finite value. So this is the, the correct algebra of which. Uh, I can study uh, or the representations with more chances of, uh, of success. Um, as I told you before, every irreducible representation, um, that the, the variables or the indeterminate z and z, zj and zj inverse will act via some non zero complex number. And um, yes, well, okay, in this case also, if you specialize that bond, you could take an algebra. Which is uh, well, much easier to study. Okay, um, so let me then formulate the, the first uh, main result. So this generalizes the uh, results of Lustig in the case of, uh, of a complex reductive connected group whose derived group is simply connected. So that, that's, a, that's a bit of condition. But now we can actually see why this is needed. So, so of course, as I announced, the goal was here to parameterize the irreducible representations of such an algebra. And in this case, um, one can do it by, by so-called, so, well, Karstein-Lucy triples. Then you have the same simple element S, a unipotent element U, and they are supposed to commute. And then the triple is, co is completed by a, 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 a something rho, which is a representation of a, of a component group. As is about the component group of S and U, uh, the centralizer of S and U in the in given group G. Um, however, then uh, not all such rows are allowed here, and the condition on which rows are eligible is uh, rather intricate. Namely, one first takes the, the centralizer, and one replaces G by the centralizer of this semi simple element S. That's another complex reductive group, and there we require that the pair u and rho is a, a cuspidal pair. In, or, or now we require that the cuspidal support of it, uh, well, is the data m, v, and epsilon, which we, uh, which we insert in the Hecker algebra. But that, that's very, uh, yeah, that, that's very tricky. And also, um, even if we had started with a uh, a complex reductive group G, which was connected, then the centralizer of S in G would not necessarily be connected. So, so even then, it would be necessary to develop this notion of cosmological support for disconnected complex uh, reductive groups. 
uh, precisely to avoid this, Rustic assumed that, that not only G was correct, but also the derived group of G was correct, because then the centralizer of S would always be a correct conductive group. Okay, so, so you can do this, and this, this gives you a nice way to, uh, to describe these, these irreducible representations, and nice is here not, not so precise yet, so let me, um, in the next few slides, describe some, some properties of this parameterization of the irreducible representations. So first, the case where the, all the parameters Z are specialized to 1, then, um, well, the algebra what would be specialized to an algebra which uh, is a, a semi-direct product of, uh, say, a commutative algebra associated to lattice and this extended finite bio group. And then the parameters S, U, and Rho, well, the S will determine the, the character of, uh, of the, the sub-algebra of uh, the, the group, of which is a group algebra of the character lattice of T. That's always the case here. And, um, well, if you do it with parameters z equal to 1, then the remaining part after you have put in the s is a representation of a certain finite group, namely the stabilizer of s in this extended y group. And there you can say that this, it, it's, uh, it recovers uh, the, uh, the Springer correspondence for this uh, extended finite y group. Actually, this, well, yeah, this is more or less, more or less the same, proving this Springer correspondence for extended finite y group. In this case, it boils down to the same constructions. So there, there it, it is theoretically satisfying. It gives you the representation which you uh, want. If the parameters are not one, of course, um, well, yeah, it's more, you cannot write it down so explicitly. But you can say something. For example, you can uh, say what the central characters are. Um, well, at least then first you need to know what the center of this fi Hecker algebra is. But fortunately, this has been known for a long time how to compute the center of an F.I. Hecker algebra. That's part of the burn time presentation. And well, if you look at the multiplication relations in these F.I. Hecker algebra, then you notice that you have these simple reflections, which you could try to commute with uh, uh, elements of the, the group algebra of the, this lattice, but they didn't necessarily commute to say an error term. But if, the, if you look, take an element in this group algebra of the lattice, or rather in the yeah, well, then the functions on the associated torus, which was invariant under this wild group, then actually the whole thing would commute. And also this, uh, yeah, if you look at this action of this R group, this is also okay if you take elements. Uh, well, if you take functions on the torus, which such as the functions are uh, invariant under this R group, and they are invariant under this finite wild group, then the whole computation relations uh, work out. So, so you get at least some sub-algebra of the center, and then there's a, and then, and then another argument, which is already by Bernstein and Lustig, which shows you that that's the entire center. Mm -hmm. So um, the central character of any irreducible representation is in this case um, well, an element of the torus times well, the, the parameters for the ZJs, which in this case I wrote as C cross to the power T, and you must consider everything modulo the action of this extended finite value. And then the, the central character of this representation associated to S, U, and Rho is not S, as you may um, expect on those, but it's slightly more complicated than that. The U also plays a role. Then if for every unipotent element U, you can always find, uh, well, at least under the conditions you get to use S, you can find a co-character with values in the torus T such that it's associated to U, and that means that if you conjugate U with this uh, co character, in this case gamma U, then you get the T squared times U. So T squared times U is a meaningful expression if U is a, a unipotent element. Maybe I should say raise U to the power T squared. So this is more like a notation which you would use for a nilpotent element in a, in a B algebra. But, uh, okay, so that's that's maybe not written very precisely, but it's a meaningful uh, notation still. And then the character here is consists of S times the gamma U evaluated at the, the specified value of uh, Z. Again, this is um, somewhat uh, cheating because the, the Zs which I used here are not one complex number, they are uh, well, an array of complex numbers. And 
there the co-character gamma u uh, takes as input one complex number in principle. But in this case, you can also make sense of inserting an array of complex numbers into it, and then you get out of it. And well, you can still make it work if you use uh, no, okay. the construction is such that, that you can make sense. So, in any case, uh, there's a simple formula for the, 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 the central character, as you said. The, there, there are more properties of this parameterization of representation of hack algebras, and they're related to the, say, the more analytic properties of representations, for example, temperedness. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure that Eric Otto has talked to you a lot about this. Um, so, I will not give you a very uh, precise definition, but uh, well, the preferred way to do it is that you say that uh, you first do get some. some Finite dimensional representation of the affine Hecke algebra. If you look at, uh, say, the, 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 the sub algebra of functions on the stars, it acts on this finite dimensional representation and you can decompose it with respect to this commutative sub algebra. You will get a, a set of, of, of weights or, or eigenvalues, eigenfunctions for, for this uh, commutative sub algebra and, and you, uh, put, you put a certain restriction on these weights. They have to apply a certain subset of this torus and here I wrote it uh, rather imprecisely as an obtuse negative code. Um, the more precise statement is first that you uh, take the, the, the absolute value of such a point in the torus and then you take a logarithm and then you end up in the, the real the algebra of this torus and then it must lie in a, in a negative obtuse code. Um, another way to say to, to say it, you can, which has been proven by Eric, is this is equivalent to requiring that an irreducible representation not uh, standard in the above sense, given only if it appears in the support of the, the Poincharel measure of the Hecke algebra. That's a more, it's a more abstract way to have formulas to think of it. So and um, I, yeah, I slightly yeah. object that this is possible in one direction, of course, obviously, but the other direction. Uh, that is to prove that really everything is supported by some temperate representations. That is, I think, not the um, case. Ah, right, yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking of this, this part in your paper when you, um, you say something like that this is equivalent to requiring that the matrix coefficients are Temper linear functionals on, uh, on the act on the algebra. Then, then, yeah, that, that, that's more like a criterion by Okay, and any case, well, my parameterization of these representations is such that uh, one coming out of there is it, temper. You can read it off from the semi-simple part of the of the parameter, and the S should be a, a, an element which lies in, in, in a compact uh, subgroup. So you can say it lies in the unitary part of this. Towards T. And uh, well, that's nice because if you know a bit about the Langlands correspondence, then in the Langlands correspondence one uh, assumes that temperate representations will correspond to bounded L parameters. And well, this is precisely saying that the element S, which will appear in some Langlands parameter later, must be bounded, or the subgroup generated by S must be bounded. So, in this sense, it fits nicely. Another property which you can look at is uh, discrete series representations. Um, but that, but that, that's a bit tricky to do directly. It's easier to look at the notion called essentially discrete series representation, where you still allow the center of a group to do whatever it, it likes. Uh, so a representation of a, say, a, 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 a periodic reductive group would be called essentially discrete series if its restriction to the derived group would be a discrete series of this derived group. And you can mimic this, this by uh, for Hecke algebras as well. And then it says something like that the weights for the algebra uh, 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 functions on the torus must lie in the, well, in the interior of a certain uh, negative of two cone and, and times the, the center of this group that, that you must allow that. And here there's also a criterion in terms of. Uh, well, decay rates of matrix uh, coefficients, 
proven will not die error, which in this case is probably more directly um, inspired by, by the results of Kasselman saying that a mutual representation is essentially discrete search in this sense, if and only if it is it's restriction to a certain sub-algebra, which in some sense is a certain simple sub-algebra, is this square integral, and that means that uh, all matrix coefficients of this representation um, can be regarded as L2 functions on a certain, uh, well, essentially on, on, this, on this lattice, X star of T. And, um, well, so this property uh, it, it is respected by, by the, my parameterization in the following way, namely that uh, the representation is essentially this discrete series, precisely if the unipotent element that you put in there is a, a distinguished unipotent element in, in the group uh, G. So that's again, distinguished means that it's not uh, contained in, in a proper lattice subgroup. So that's again a very uh, very easy condition to check. And then if you want to know what when is a representation really a uh, discrete series, then you can require that it's both essentially discrete and tempered, and then it works out. Okay, what have we done so far? I started with a, a possibly disconnected reductive group. To be in there a, a quasi deadly subgroup, I take an important element and, and an enhancement of the a representation of the component group, which have to be custodial. To this data, I associated an affine Hecker algebra, and then I went on to parameterize the irreducible representations with, uh, well, essentially, Cartier-Lucidic triples S, U, and rho, where there was a tricky condition on the rho. And uh, I told you that, that this parameterization uh, well, behaves well. You, you can easily read out what the central character of a representation is, and you can check in terms of the parameters as you and row when the representation is, is tempered uh, and when it is essentially a discrete series representation. And moreover, there, there's this, uh, a further property saying that this whole construction is, is in some sense compatible with parabolic induction, but to formulate that correctly, you better not use irreducible representations, but rather uh, standard modules, which are, well, modules which, are, which are closer to modules induced from, from, from parabolic software. But essentially, there is a property saying that it respects parabolic induction. Okay. Um, so this was the part where, where I started with a reductive group, and I tried to, to find all the original representations. Now I want to match this with Langlois parameters. And, we, uh, and it will match precisely in some cases, and match less precisely in other cases. Um, so. Uh, I will uh, not, again, not do the more general case, I will stick to, uh, to split groups in this, uh, in this part of the talk. So split groups over uh, a local lunar medium field. And then um, a Langlands parameter well, is just a, a group homomorphism from the main group of the field types S of C to the, to the complex reductive group here. And um, well, of course there are conditions, it has to be a continuous homomorphism on the on the way group and has to be algebraic on the S of C part. And uh, well, in, in the case of this talk, where we also need enhancements of Langlands parameters, and since the group is split, an enhancement uh, you can say rather well, easily what it is, you take this component group, you take the centralized of your Langlands of the of your Langlands parameter, you divide out the center of your group, take the component group. And, uh, well, and you can enhance your range parameter with representation of this group S5. If the group are not split, then uh, this was a, point, was a point where I would have to use some nasty technical details. Um, and, well, yeah, the language conjectures, as far as I understand them, say, say that, that um, well, such enhanced language parameters there should be in projection with the uh, uh, set. Well, maybe not all of them, but well, probably most of these advanced language parameters should be in projection with a set of irreducible representations of this uh, reductive periodic group. So, um, now I want to, to relate this to the Hecker algebra which I discussed before. So first, um, I need to, to specify a correct set of language parameters of which I want to with which I want to parameterize these uh, useful representations. 
And this set will be a Bernstein component of Langlands parameters, which is a notion that uh, Henri Aubert, Ahmed Moussaoui, and I identified some uh, two years ago. And the, the, the essential way to think of it is, well, you think first, remember first what was a Bernstein component in representation theory of uh, periodic groups. There it says something like, you take an irreducible representation, you compute its Crystal support, and then you look at all irreducible representations which have the same crystal support, but, but you allow the crystal support to be twisted by a ramified character. Well, that's the same that we can do with Langlands parameters if we define what it means to twist it as a ramified character, and if we define what a crystal support map is, and if we, well, therefore, we also need to define what crystal depth is. So, um, yeah, so let me start with defining crystal depth. That's why I brought this up. And uh, the cross-fidelity of a layer parameter is defined in terms of, uh, well, of cross-fidelity of a unipotent pair. So, uh, but not in the, in, in the group G that we started with. We you first replace G by the, the centralizer of uh, well, the image of the way group. That's another complex reductive group. But again, it need not be, need not be connected, even if G is connected in this uh, setting. But in there you have this, this uh, element U phi because well, the conditions of the language parameters say that U phi commutes with the image of the way group. And then you can require that that will be uh, a unipotent pair. <coughs> and, but, uh, and additionally, you require that the parameter has to be a discrete language parameter. So this is a notion of a uh, customal language parameter. So, so this uh, well, falls from the sky. So if you are familiar with the Langlands correspondence, you know that uh, square integral representations should correspond to discrete Langlands parameters. Um, but, but the Langlands correspondence doesn't say so clearly what supercustomal representations should correspond to. So it's not, and maybe for that reason, it's not easy to define when a Langlands parameter sec should be called custodial. But if you add this enhancement row, then we do have here a consistent definition of custodiality for Langlands parameters. And in fact, um, in many cases where this Langlands correspondence, local Langlands correspondence is known, we have checked that these are precisely the Langlands parameter, enhanced Langlands parameter, which correspond to supercustomal representation. So the definition has a good chance of uh, making sense. Is phi discrete or phi comma rho is discrete? Um, well, the street is, is the property yes, of the phi. You don't need the row to specify that. It, yeah. Yeah. So I did a presentation of WF cross SL2, it should not factor to the. Oh, oh, the phi, it, 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 this actually um, involves SL2C, yes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, so that, that involves in the, the way group, but also the U in some sense, yeah, that's true. But, it, but, but the discrete does not involve rows so far, it involves group. Okay, and next, um, well, we need then a custodial support map for Langlands parameters. And, and well, this is easy to, to define, at least if you're not so picky about, about possible twists by ramified characters. Then you use the previously defined custodial support map for unipotent pairs. And that's what you do to the unipotent pair uh, well, contained in your Langlands parameter. And the rest of your Langlands parameter, you do nothing. You use to stay the same on the way group. You just adjust the unipotent element, and then of course you need to know that, uh, well, given the unipotent element, there is a unique way to extend it to a representation of SO2C, SO2C at least unique to Cryugacy, so, so that, that determines the parameter here up to, uh, up to Cryugacy. And again, this, this notion of customer support map, well, it, 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 it comes out of nothing here. But, uh, well, yeah, checked it in, in various cases where the Langlands correspondence was known, like GON or, or classical groups, and there it really corresponds to the, to the classical support map for representations of PIA groups. So, so again, this, this uh, by checking against examples, it, it seems to make sense. And, well, another way to check that it makes sense is that it gives you the parameter back it well, if it was already custodial well from the start, and also when you plug it in, then what you obtain is really a custodial well language parameter in the previous sense. Otherwise, I want to call it that way. Okay, and uh, now next, uh, we need to define what it means to 
twist uh, a language parameter with a verified character. Um, well, for this, um, you need to know that, that it's easy to see what should happen to the verified characters under the language correspondence, namely they should correspond to the, to the center of the, of the complex duo group, which in this case is both Z, G, and not. So, if, since I'm on the gamma side here only, I just take Z, G, not as the, as the substitute for a group of the verified characters. Then I'm going to twist my language parameters with elements of Z, G, not. That's easy to do. You multiply a language parameter by elements of Z of this form just by saying that you uh, change the image of, of a Frobenius element. You do not change anything on the inertia group of F. You also do not change anything on S of two C. And then, well, yeah, it works because if the element Z is in the center, it doesn't dis disturb anything else. Um, and also, you can take the enhancement of the language parameter just as it were. So there's a very natural way to twist um, uh, any uh, language parameter with, with this kind of unrefined character. Then, uh, well, then there's enough to define what a uh, Bernstein or rather what first of the inertial equivalence classes, namely you start with a Levy subgroup of your complex group, still you fix a customable uh, language parameter for that, you allow all possible twists, and you say, okay, this is an inertial equivalence class for, for Levy subgroup L, and then you say, okay, it's also an inertial equivalence class for G, if you consider the, the, the whole thing up to G. This is completely analogous to, to Bernstein's theory of, of cross-parallel supports for reducing the detection of the groups. Um, so, so um, let me say this. So, you in, in one simple case, if you have a Levy subgroup of chorus, and as a uh, Langer's parameter, well, the simplest thing which you can do is a trivial Langer's parameter, only maybe the Frobenius element need not act uh, as trivial, but it has images from other of the stores, then the, this is the, the simplest kind of uh, well, the inertial equivalence class which you can write down as T check. It's, it's just another way of writing T essentially. And then uh, well, you can look at uh, the, the right the set of all lang enhanced language parameters which have customer support in this given ST check. And that turned out to be a familiar set. Um, it consists of all language parameters, which uh, well, only something. Oh, well, yeah, what happens? So, so hmm, it's trivial on the inertia group, meaning that its action on the wave group is just determined by the image of the Frobenius element. That's an element of T. It's an arbitrary element of T a priori. The element U is also arbitrary in this set, and. Uh, well, there's a condition on the, on the enhancement row, and that's stating that the row should appear in the homology of a certain of the variety of real subgroups. So this uh, gives you another way to, to uh, well, recover parameters which have the same condition as in the Springer correspondence. Or, say, differently, this is another way of finding all parameters which were considered by Bertrand and Lustig in their study of the reducible representations of f i Hecke algebras. So that's, that's good. It, 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 this, this recovers uh, familiar sets of, of language parameters, at least in the case of the, of the simplest possible Bernstein uh, or, or, or inertial class. So uh, let me now write it somewhat more precisely. So, so whenever you have an inertial equivalence class, so cross the language parameter twisted with the randomized characters, you can define a Bernstein component of language parameters by taking the inverse image under the customer support map. And, uh, well, this, um, if you have done that and you have made sure that this is well defined, you automatically get an analog of the Bernstein decomposition, and that you can write the whole space of, of uh, enhanced language parameter as a union of a Bernstein component. And, well, yeah, in this way. In this case, uh, in this case, it, it's not a very deep theorem. It just consists of, of defining the things correctly. But again, this 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 decomposition here um, may look somewhat arbitrary. But in, in cases uh, like for for classical groups, we have 
I guess you can check that this corresponds via the language correspondence to the first and decomposition of, of say, this space irreducible representation of the classical organic group. So, to such a uh, uh, one version component of language parameters, I want to associate a, a Hecker algebra um, in such a way that it and generalizes known examples, in particular, if you generalize the case of the Hyborri Hecker algebra. So, this is probably known to everybody that if you take a reductive genetic group, you take the Hyborri subgroup, and then this, uh, you can look at the algebra of functions on your group which are by invariant in this Hyborri subgroup. In this case, you have an Hecker algebra, and the recursion module category of this Hecker algebra is equivalent to a certain block of the category of smooth representations. And this Terms to a very type of problem there. And um, this situation with high or spherical factors is supposed to be rather close to the general situation for any Bernstein component. There should be some algebra which may not be exactly an affine Hecker algebra, but it should be rather close to an affine Hecker algebra. And the representations of that algebra should correspond objectively to the irreducible representation of the modules of that. Hecker algebra should correspond to the certain block in the category of small representations of this PA group. Um, well, this is a very vague conjecture. Okay, if you say that it's a slight generalization, you can never say that it's wrong. But, but it's still the way to think of it. Okay, and, and well, let us check that this actually, our constructions do give the right thing in, in the simplest case where the Bernstein component is just torus and trivial and we're going to call elements and uh, trivial language parameters, then um, according to our constructions you can build a Hecker algebra from this. And uh, well our construction has as, as input in this case essentially just uh, yeah well the, the, the root system of this of this group G and, and, and maybe this, this finite uh, finite extended model group. And you can check that, that it naturally gives you the same algebra as the, well, the same Iwahori, not the motor algebra. So, um, and in that case, in fact, uh, well, that, that, that's one of the algebras that has been studied extensively, in particular by Cartan and Lustig, who have uh, found all irreducible representations and parameterized them with these Cartan and Lustig triples. And, well, now, as I showed you before, we have done the same. We've also parameterized the individual representations with such symbols. And in fact, it, uh, it's, it turns out that it agrees our parameterization is the same as the crash diagnostic parameterization, although they proceed by different methods. Okay. So it was a non trivial exercise to check that they in fact agreed, but they do fortunately. But that's very one of the reason why it's fortunate is that this crash diagnostic parameterization has to be well, more or less accepted as being a correct version of the. Langlands correspondence for a more spherical representation. So it will be bad if our constructions take something different. Um, well, yeah, you can you can also look at other Bernstein components. There, um, yeah, it doesn't always work as well, but for some components it works better than for others. If you, uh, well, yeah, okay. So this is a general setup, but is there if there's one? Extra condition here, namely that uh, uh, in this Bernstein component, you need you have the center of your Levy subgroup, and the center acts on the well on, on all the possible twists of your classical Langlands parameter. And if it acts freely, so so it's not that, that there's some stabilizer effect, then then uh, you are in a better position, and then you can actually prove that uh, the consortium which I sketched like half an hour ago produces the, the correct uh, results and gives you an algebra which uh, whose irreducible representations are parameterized precisely by these uh, by the, the members of this Bernstein component of enhanced language parameters. So that that's nice. But but it's only relatively small parts of all possible um, Bernstein components I would say. In general um, yeah, more is needed. So I will be very sketchy. I'll just say this in general: a Bernstein component of Langlands parameters determines you a torus, namely all possible twists of your uh, classical uh, Langlands parameter, and it also determines you uh, a kind of wire group, 
or an enhanced finite bar group. And with these data, you can also try to build an affine hack algebra and in a similar way, using the, the, the previous ideas, uh, but slightly, slightly uh, differently. And in fact, that, that um, well, yeah, you can then build an affine hack algebra with irreducible, uh, well, whose with underlying torus is the torus TS check, and whose value group is, is the, the value group given by you from, from the magnets parameters, and whose irreducible representations are in bijection with the uh, well, specified set of magnets parameters. That is this way because you. So, so, yeah, okay, I have a few. So, so to see the difference is already in the Custodal case. So in the case of a Custodal Bernstein component, the component is just torus, essentially. Uh, and um, well, the one best thing you can do is take the radio functions on this torus. But that's not the same as, as we did in, in our earlier constructions, because then you would get the regular functions on the center of the Levy subgroup, or in this case, the center of, uh, of G, not, which, which would then necessarily be the same as the torus G check. So that, that's really well, what causes the, the problems here. Another example here, which is very relevant, uh, and consists in the case of GON, there you can work out things rather explicitly. You can, um, in fact, describe easily when a Langer's parameter for, for GON is, uh, is customable. It's basically the same as saying that it's an irreducible representation of the wave group. So if I take some Langer's parameter of this form, trivial unipolar element, some, some representation of the wave group, but reducible, then um, this L is the one which appears in the customable support. And, uh, well, you can write out the Langer's parameter, you can compute the Hecke algebra, and in this case, what comes out of there is a tensor product of affine Hecke algebra of type GO, where the dimensions or the ranks are precisely as given by the multiplicities of the irreducible representations. And also the parameters there are, uh, well, every tensor factor has, a, has its own uh, indeterminate ZZJ. This is, this is the reason why at the start of this story I needed to have uh, well, as many possible independent parameters. And because in the, I know one knows from the example that, that the parameter set the different tensor factors need not be the same. And um, in fact, in, in, the, in the associated case of, of the Piedic group GLN, the, these algebras have been computed well, by Bushnell and Kuzco, uh, 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 I think, but in some cases already earlier. And there one has a specific formula for the parameters zj, or in that case qj, or something like that. They, they are uh, of the cardinality of, 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 uh, of the residue field of some periodic field. Maybe square root of that, but uh, it need not be the one periodic field that you started with. It can also be a finite extension of it. So, well, yeah, in all this story, it was, was necessary to, to carry along this, all, this whole long list of, of parameters to, to enable this example uh, to work. Um, but, but then it works, uh, it works nicely for, for GON. You can now compute in, on the, on the GAWA side the Hecker algebras. We even have a way in this, in this case of GON to specify uh, the parameters without, without using PID groups, essentially. So then we can do on the GAWA side with, with, with people at the Umbiatic site uh, long before, but we can do it independently and get the same uh, result. I guess I'm a bit uh, over time, so I, uh, I stop here and I thank you for your attention. Any questions? Comments? After you discussed the Iwahori Heke algebra, you said something doesn't work quite as well. I mean, um, go back then. yeah. Um, well, 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 what do you mean? No, I mean you perhaps uh, want to construct to each block in the sense of parameters, uh, some Hecke algebra. Yes, and yes. And you said that it works well for the Iwahori case, but it doesn't quite work in other cases. Well, in some other cases. Yes, so, 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 so the, um, 
uh, what I wanted to do is to apply the construction with, with as input a complex reductive group, uh, a Levy subgroup, a unipotent element, and enhancement. And, and from that, I constructed the, these kind of fi neck algebras, and I wanted to associate those fi neck algebras to, to, a, to a given Bernstein component of Langlands parameters. And um, well, yes, you can do that, but, but it turns out you cannot always do it in such a way that the irreducible representations of this fi neck algebra match up with the Langlands parameters. So, so somehow, um, yeah, well, that, that doesn't work. And the, the, the basic reason why it doesn't work is that um, sometimes this, this set of cuspidal you can only see it in, in, in piezo groups. If you have a, a cuspidal Bernstein component for a piezo group, then the members there need not be in bijection with the, the ramified characters of this of the appropriate Levy subgroup. The Levy sub the center of this or the ramified characters of this Levy subgroup will always act transitively on, on a cuspidal Bernstein component, but they need act need not act freely on such a Bernstein component in piezo groups. And, and this, well, if you have some, some yeah, I always have some finite stabilizer subgroup, but this, this complicates things. There is a recipe to construct uh, to uh, Langer's parameter and associated opinion hack algebra? Yes, the, 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 there is now. Uh, it's it, it, it's that, uh, the construction which I gave here in terms of complex inductive proof has to be to be modified, but, but it's well, it's it's a rather te technical thing. But you need to um, what you need to take into account for sure is the is the data of the, this Bernstein component of Langlands parameters, which in particular involves uh, um, the, 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 this one torus. So, so, so you need to, to set your fi Hecker algebra up in such a way that the, the torus underlying this fi Hecker algebra is precisely the same torus as the one you see in the, in the Langlands parameters. Okay, so. So, about the. There is a certain uh, undefinedness of the parameters. And so, do. At least, that, that is what I understood. Yeah, but do you have some. Uh, because I think, in, in finally, it should be. It should be precisely determined. Uh, but do you have some, some idea how, how to make this more precise, this choice of. Well, yeah, we thought about this. Um, it's a tricky thing. So, so initially, you would be inclined to say, as parameter z, I take the cardinality of the residue field of f. But that, uh, well, that doesn't always work because already this, in this final, in this example shows that, that that's not always what you have to do because, well, right below down there, you see it's not always the same Q. But, but um, then in this case, for geo and one can analyze this, this parameter QFJ rather precisely in terms of the irreducible representation. It's associated to the, to the torsion number of, uh, of this of the customer representation, which is precisely the number of ramified characters that fix this customer representation. But there was there was some other ingredient that unfortunately uh, I forgot. Uh, if it's not G, if the group is not G O N, then uh, yeah, we expect that there should be some way to specify the parameter. But at the moment, we don't know uh, how to do this. At least not in terms purely on, on the Galois side. How does this compare with this work of uh, Alan Ross and Goldberg and so on about uh, ramified principal series? So their construction is kind of not so simple. Um, I'm not what do you mean for SLM? Which work do you mean for Something for general reductive group to a principal series, they can associate the correspond to the corresponding component of the Bernstein yes. center. Yes. There is some algebra which they construct. Which I don't think it is. So but this is probably for, for, for group okay, SLN, right? SLN. It's for SLN? Yeah. 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 Or maybe SLN. for all groups. Yeah, for principal studies, I think it's just a split. Now, well, the, the, the special linear groups are, are among the class for which we check that the heck algebra is constructed here are 
monitor equivalent certainly to the culture dust which you can obtain uh, from the corresponding burns burn and components of periodic groups. So, so, so there, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that area fits. Uh, your question was for principal studies? Or? Yeah, in general. I mean when the group is split, and uh, for principal studies, yes, we, we check. And in fact, it was checked previously in some What was uh, Paul Baum and Roger Simon, but for a group with split group, principal studies? Any, any split group? Any split group, but just for principal studies? Any principal studies? Any principal studies, the algebra which can yeah, in fact, coincide with the one which appears in uh, Alan Roche. Uh, type. Yeah, 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 okay, I, I see now to which paper you refer, yeah, yeah. the ecology of astral burns and components of principle six, yeah. Yeah, that, that is indeed another case, but well, that was actually a case which we started with, with er, before this project, and, and one motivation was the need to generalize that, 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 that case to, 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 well, to, to other burns and components. Good, all right, let's thank the speaker.